Delilah Crespo here with another episode of Diversity with Delilah. All right, so I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but um, Latino or Hispanic Heritage Month, as it's known, is September 15th through October 15th. There is a reason why we get half and a half, but uh, anyway, so let's get started with Ignacio Lu Moline. He is known as the first Hispanic player to ever play in the NFL. And there's not too much information because, again, this is like the 1920s and, you know, data and stuff. So I will share what I have. So Ignacio was a Cuban-born professional American football player who played in the NFL for the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets during the 1927 season. He is distinguished as being the first Cuban and Latin American to play in the league. He attended the Pedal School in New Jersey before enrolling at Cornell University, where he followed in the footsteps of his older brother, Joaquin, who was later inducted into the Cor Cornell Athletic Hall of Fame. Moline lettered twice, each in basketball and football. However, his, his sophomore year ended. Both of his parents sadly passed away. He found a prospect of returning to Cornell too challenging, so he went back and stayed in Cuba. But when the Frankfurt Athletic Association in Philadelphia contacted him about playing for the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets, the defending NFL champions at the time, he returned to the U.S. to play for this team. The team contract Moline for a salary of $50 per game. In addition, he received $50 per week just to attend practice. Now, again, this is 1920, so $50 a game plus showing up to practice, that's a lot of money at this time, right? Um, so there is that. He only played nine games and only in 1927. Moliner rushed for 75 yards and passed for another 35. He also caught several passes and even scored a touchdown during the Yellow Jackets win over the Buffalo Bison. He played in nine NFL games that season, but at that time, Yellow Jackets didn't do well. They fell below 500 in the standings, and so they really didn't go to the playoffs and weren't able to defend. Moliner returned to Cornell instead and decided to finish his career and his degree, excuse me, <laughs> and decided to just live a life away from football. At the time of his death, his own, his own family knew very little of his athletic career outside of college. Like they knew he went to Cornell, they knew he played basketball, they didn't know that he actually played for the NFL. And so they didn't realize that he was distinguished as being the first official Latino to play in the NFL. He decided to focus on business. So that's basically what he did. Prior to 1999, it was concluded that just Rodriguez, a fullback with the 1929 Buffalo Bison, was the first NFL player of Hispanic heritage. However, in 2000, Heidi Caldwell, Molina's granddaughter, contacted the Pro Football Hall of Fame about donating her grandfather's NFL contract from 1927. Her call was of great interest to the Hall because at the time it was widely believed that Rodriguez was the first Hispanic player in the NFL. Further research by the Hall of Fame and Hispanic historian Mario Longoria confirmed that in fact Moline played in the NFL in 1927. Today, Moline's contract is prominently displayed at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So you can find that contract there. And so I know it's not a lot of fanfare. He wasn't flashy. But he is distinguished for being that first Latino player in the NFL. And so just jump the gun a little bit there with Hispanic Heritage Month to talk a little bit of Lou and why there really wasn't a lot of information about him. It's because he didn't spend a lot of time in the NFL. But he should still be recognized as being the first Latino to play in the NFL. And... That concludes this week's episode of Diversity with Delilah. I will see you next time with another episode of Diversity with Delilah. Thank you for listening. Bye. Yeah.